bow our heads and we'll say a prayer. Lord, I give you thanks for the day and for my brothers and sisters who are here. We come, Lord God, for you to guide us and to bless us. Help us to remember again, Lord God, the reason for Christmas, what we are celebrating. In Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers, my sisters. You all know what Christmas is about, right? You guys remember, right? Yep, amen. We can go home. <laughs> no, I'm going to preach a sermon anyway. Even though we all really know what this is, it is good sometimes for us to stop and be reminded what we are celebrating when it comes to Christmas. Why is it that we do all the things that we do? It wouldn't be Christmas without... Without throwing wrapping paper at each other on Christmas Eve. That's what we do in our family. It isn't Christmas until we start pelting each other with the wrapping paper and driving my wife absolutely bananas because the house is a disaster. But that's Christmas. Is that what Christmas is all about? Throwing wrapping paper at each other. Eating way too many cookies so that you kind of feel a little bit queasy because you ate too much sugar and you're not so, you know. Is that Christmas? Wouldn't it be Christmas if there isn't snow on the ground, right? It isn't Christmas if, what is it? Maybe the most common question that gets asked at Christmas time is, what do you want for Christmas, right? Because a big part of Christmas is giving gifts and receiving gifts, right? And that's not too far off of what the real meaning of Christmas is, right? Giving. It's the season of giving. We give each other gifts. We wrap them and put them under the tree. The youth group had wrapped presents for all the children that we had we had gathered presents for. The youth group is or the middle school kids are gonna put together gift things for the homeless. Gift things. That's not a right word. Care bags. What is it? Care bags. Care bags. There you go. That's a better word than gift things. It has <laughs> gifts to the home. Gift giving. It's what the but if you change that word just a little bit to a word that really means the same thing, it changes the character of the whole thought process. Let's change it to the word sacrifice. What's a sacrifice? It's something that you give of yourself, something that may even be uh, cause you issues or struggles or whatever, something that is important to you. You take that thing and you give it as a gift to someone else that is a sacrifice. But as soon as you say sacrifice, you start to think of what? Christ on the cross. And that's really what Christmas is all about, isn't it? The reality is that mankind recognizes that there is an issue between them and the Almighty God. We all know it from our conscience. We know that there's something isn't right because I haven't always been what I should be, because I haven't always had the best thoughts about other people, because I've said things that I regret, because I've failed to do good things that God would have me. I know that there is an issue between me and God, and humanity's response to that is always to try and do something to make up for it. <laughs> Even the way that we treat each other, right? One spouse does something to the other spouse or fails in some way to the other spouse, and you go and you buy flowers as a peace offering, as a peace sacrifice to try and make things right. You leave one of your friends hanging and you do something to try and make it up to them to make peace. It is the way that we operate as human beings that we try and make some sacrifice to make things right. And even as Christians, we try and do that sometimes with God know that I didn't behave so well. Maybe if, I, if I'm really zealous for the Lord, everything will be all right. Maybe if I, if I cry enough tears and I'm really serious and, 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 and thoughtful about my confession, then God will be happy with me. Maybe if I do just a little bit more, then God will be happy with me. We make peace offerings or sacrifices to make God happy with us, right? But the problem is what? There is nothing that I can give to God that's going to take away my sin. I 
absolutely nothing. What do I have that God wants? What do I have that God needs? What do I have that God can't just make more of? There is nothing that I can do. No sacrifice that I can make. There's a song, there's a hymn that says that, right? Rock of Ages, I think it's the second verse, says, right? Not the labors of my hand can fulfill thy law's demand. Could my zeal and its results no rest but no? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. And that's why there's Christmas. Is because you and I have nothing that we can give to God to atone for our sins, to make things right. There is no sacrifice that we can make. And so God had to make the sacrifice. In our text today, the writer to the Hebrews is writing, and, and he talks about Christmas. He says, when Christ came, this is why he came. This was his thought process. This is what his attitude was when he came at Christmas time. And the whole section that I'm about to read to you focuses on sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse 5. You can find it printed on the next page, page 10 of your program. Just listen to what he says. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, there's Christmas, he came into the world. He said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. He's talking to God the Father. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then he said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, although the law required them to be made. And he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first, that the other sacrifices, for the second, that's his own sacrifice. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Famous scene in a famous movie. Whole group is, 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 uh, uh, running out, they run out of water, and everyone's about to die. And King Julian says, We need to make a sacrifice to the water gods by throwing a sacrifice into the volcano. You guys know what movie I'm talking about? Madagascar 2, right? The greatest movie, one of the greatest movies of all time. King Julian, the lemur, says, we just have to throw a sacrifice into the volcano. Then the water gods will be happy with us and will give us water. And they go and he said, will it work? And he says, no. Oh, yes, it will work. And he says, and so then he portrays the god and he says, no, oh, that was a very lovely sacrifice. Thank you for the sacrifice. You want another, have another sacrifice. I don't want another sacrifice. Have another sacrifice. You don't get so skinny. You know, anyway. <laughs> it will ruin the word sacrifice for you. Be the sacrifice that you and I could never make. To be our sacrifice. And notice what it says, the very last line here. You and I are made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Christ. Our good deeds, our giving, our doing, our tears, our seriousness cannot take away sin ever. But the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross makes you and me holy. Appreciation for what I have done. How can I show my love for you, Lord God, for the sacrifice that you have made because I could not make it myself? What can I do? And John writes in 1 John, he says, this is love for God to what? To obey his commands. Maybe as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, maybe that's what we need to ask ourselves. How is my obedience to the Lord God? My, my obedience to God's commands is a direct reflection 
of my appreciation for the sacrifice that he has made. So am I obeying God? Not so that I am saved, because Jesus saved me already, right? Died on the cross to take away my sins, so I am saved. But how is my thanksgiving to him, how is my response to him in the way that I live? Does my life and my choices in my life shout out to him, Lord God, I am so grateful and thankful for what you have done. I need to stop for a minute and ask yourself, do I worry? Am I content in my life with what he has given to me? Am I doing the things that God would have me do, or are there things that I'm doing that he would not have me do? That's my thanksgiving to God for what he has done. That's my response to the gift of the Savior. As God has loved me, am I loving my fellow man? Am I forgiving? Or am I holding a grudge? Am I trusting? Or am I worrying? Am I respecting or am I disrespecting? Am I content or am I whining, moaning, and complaining because of this, that, and the other? Is God my number one? Or would I be angry with God if he took this or that from me? I think all of us can sit here and recognize the fact that we don't always say thank you to God in the best way that we could. Right? But when we stop and we understand what Christmas is all about, that God sent his son to be the sacrifice that we could never make, maybe it's a good time for us to stop and say, let me in my life strive to say thank you to God as best I can for the sacrifice that he made. Let me sacrifice for God because he sacrificed for me for the sacrifice that I could never make. Make sense? My life in Christ as a reflection of my thanksgiving for what God has done. And so at Christmas, we, we gather together with family and friends and we put aside our differences. We give to each other because God has given to us. We sing and we celebrate and we decorate because it's a special, wonderful thing. We do all of it, though, because Christ sacrificed what I could not. He saved me. And he forgave me. Mariah Carey has made a hundred million dollars off the song All I Want for Christmas is You. A hundred million dollars off of one song. Right? I've always found that song a little bit weird because she said, I don't want anything special for Christmas. I don't want anything fancy. I don't want anything... Uh, expensive or wonderful, all I want is you. It feels a little bit like an insult. <laughs> but that's not what she means. All I want for Christmas is you. <coughs> that's what God sings about you and me. He wants you and me. That's what Christmas is all about, is that he did not want us to be separated from him. He did not want us to be lost to hell. He did not want us to be separated from him. He wanted us. And so he did everything he could so that you and I would belong to him, would be saved from our own sins, that heaven would be our home, so that we would have peace with the Almighty God. So have a Merry Christmas. Whether you get the gift that you want, whether the Christmas cookies get burned, <laughs> whether the Christmas ham blows up in the oven, whether whatever happens, have a Merry Christmas because Jesus loved you enough to sacrifice himself, to grant us, to give us eternal life. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our next hymn. It is...